What's up, YouTube family? Welcome back to my channel, Amelia Toss. That's right, Amelia Toss. Y'all see my shirt? Amelia Toss. And if you guys are interested, make sure you check out that card up here at the top so you can check out my product review on my shirt, um, Amelia Toss. Let's talk about it. So, Without further ado, today we will be talking about SFAB, the selection and assessment process. This is a long overdue video. I was supposed to have did this video back in February, but I got a little sidetracked and a little busy. So without further ado, if you guys are interested, make sure you keep watching. So you guys, the first thing you have to do before joining SFAB is submit your 4187. So I did my 4187, there was a template or a how to fill out um, 4187, like an example, on the SFAB recruiting page on Facebook. So if you guys have any questions other than the questions that I am answering for you guys based off this video, then just go to the SFAB recruiting page on Facebook. Um, because a lot of people are asking the same questions over and over and over, and you can probably find those answers on Facebook. But um, I did my 4187 in June, right? I had my commander sign it. I had the battalion commander sign it. I sent it through the SFAB recruiting team. You guys, I kid you not, I sent this, this email at 16.30, like on a Wednesday. Thursday morning when I walked in at 09, SFAB was um, emailing me, responding back saying, hey, you have officially um, been um, selected to go through the background process. So when they do the background process, of course they were reviewing your records, seeing if you have anything derogatory in your background and your eye perms or whatever, making sure you have a clearance because everybody needs a secret clearance at least to be an SFAB. Now y'all know y'all need some type of clearance, especially based off your MOS. Y'all got clearances, right? I know y'all got clearances. Anyway, um, I had an email the next day, you guys. And the background process took, what, a day? So then I got another email, like 24, 48 hours saying, hey, after reviewing your background, you are selected to come do the assessment. The assessment will be located at Fort Bragg, North Carolina, where you will be staying over here. You need to make sure your uh, government travel card is activated. You need to make sure you reserve this and do this and do that. All the basic stuff that you need to do when you go on TDY, like airborne school, air talk school, it's the same process. You know what I'm saying? You know what I'm saying? So, um, I did all that. Then the next week, that was like, oh, you have to be a selection next week, which was like June 13th, you guys. I went to selection, so I did my 4187. The next week, I was at Fort Grant, you guys. Like, I came home, I remember coming home, telling my husband, like, dog, you know that 4187? I said I was gonna do it Well, guess what? They already gave me a selection date. Now, you guys, again, I am saying that the time frame and turnaround for being selected for SFAB and doing the assessment is this quick based off when I went, which is in June of 2018. Everything might be set up a little bit different, again, based off the corona, based off from corona, corona. You know, ain't nobody trying to be out here talking about something, oh, yeah, I want to see you do a PT test, oh, yeah, I want to see you do some pull-ups and all of this, and do a rut mark. No, nah, no. Nah. So, <sighs> I'm trying to get up there. It might not be this quick turnaround that y'all are expecting based off when I went. All right, I'm gonna just keep it real. So then um, after I went to, um, you know, Fort Brad checked in and everything like that. First of all, the PT test was at the crack of dawn, like four o'clock in the morning. So after you do your 487, you get selected um, to come down and do your assessment. The assessment is a three day assessment. So like on day zero, you know, you're doing your height and weight and stuff, you're doing your APFT. Good morning, y'all. I'm getting ready to go take this PT test. It's hot. I'm sick and all of the above, but wish me luck. Now, one of the things that you must do on your APFT is score a 240. So if you can't score 240, I recommend practicing now. I recommend if you cannot do a rut march, with a rut that weighs at least 35 to 50 pounds, I recommend you guys start practicing now because those were the things that I had to do. Once I got to Bragg and I went through selection, which is like a three day process, I had to do my APFT, which means I had to score a little over 70 in each event because you know if you do the push-ups, 
the sit-ups in a two-mile run, that's only a 210. Three times 70 is a 210. You need a 240. So I think I um, went down on my run time and I went down on my sit-ups. So that ended up putting me at a 240. So if you guys can't do a 240, make sure you guys start working on that right now. I'm telling you, people were getting dropped from not being able to do a 240 on their APFT. Now, um, they want to at least see you try to do some pull-ups. Granted, I think I did a pull-up and a half. My arms was not extended like this. And I was like, <laughs> I could not pull myself up, y'all. I was just like, I can't do it. Like... If y'all ain't gonna still let me because I can't do a pull up, I mean, it is what it is. I'll take my my rug and all this other stuff that y'all had me come down here for and I will leave because at the end of the day, I can't do no pull up. I'm not telling y'all to feel that way. I'm not telling y'all to think negatively about doing pull ups because now the army is implementing the lead tuck, which um, should have you guys with your pull ups as well. But right now, um, coming through to uh, do your assessment with SAP is not the new PT test they're doing. They're still using the old PT test. So, which is your push-ups, your sit-ups, and your two-mile run. That's what they're using right now. So, you need a 240. All right, moving on, you guys. We had some six lanes. Oh, come on, don't make him use all his strength. Six lanes was, it wasn't hard. It was actually pretty easy. It's just, we had to rook to get there. You don't feel like doing nothing. You complain, you're like, oh my gosh, I gotta do this. Oh my God. So I felt like that because I was just like, are you serious? We gotta rook all the way out here just to go do, <laughs> be a leader. All right, so when you do the six lanes, they have like five or six stations. And an example is you have a group of people, which is your team, like the SFAB, they're set up in um, teams. So like every team consists of a logistics person, a maintenance person, an intel person, a commo person, a um, EOD guy, a medic, the EXO, like every team, like a team leader, every team consists of a 12 man team. So when I went to selection and did the assessment, we was broken down into teams and we had to, for example, figure out how to get from point A to point B. So like I was a leader and I had to lead my team on how to get from point A to point B. It's pretty simple, you get evaluated on that. And then you also have to take a test within your MOS. And then, so like I'm a 92 Yankee, my questions on my test was just 92 Yankee MOS specific, specific related questions. So for an example, with me being a 92 Yankee, my one of my questions was, what is class two? Okay, I know what class two is. What form do you use to turn in equipment? I know that. Okay, so like questions like that. So it's not that hard. And then after you take your test, you have, um, you have another day where you have to go through the rut march. So you have, I think an hour and a half, an hour and 30 minutes to finish a five mile rut. And my rug weighed in at 62 pounds. So when you go through, you only have to, your rug only has to weigh 50 pounds. My rug was 62 pounds. And the reason why it was 62 pounds is because people was finishing the cross, like walking across the line with their rugs. Like, oh, well, I did it, I did it, I'm better than, I did the time, I did beat the uh, weight requirements. No. So some people rug was less than 50 pounds. And if your rug was less than 50 pounds, you was getting sent home. Um, so that's why I made my rug be 62 pounds because I want to be on the safe side. So what they do is you weigh your rug. You go through six lanes and all that. You weigh your rug and if your rug is at 50 pounds, you're good. If you feel like, okay, I know I'm right at 50 pounds, let me add a little bit more weight, make it 51, 52 pounds, then that should, you. I mean, you should still be good too. And if I was you, I would recommend doing that as well because if you get to that uh, finish line and your rug is 49 pounds, I hate to say it to you, bruh, bruh, but uh, you ain't getting selected. So when I cross the finish line, my rug was 62 pounds and I'll leave a clip or a picture of my rug and the, the thing that they use to measure your rug for rug day. And then after that, we have a commander's interview and the commander is basically asking you like, why do you want to be in SFAB? What um, do you bring, what do you think you would bring to SFAB if you were selected to be in SFAB? Um, what other questions they ask me? 
they was asking me like change of command stuff because they seen on one of my NCOERs where I was so dedicated and so focused on change of command and helping out commanders and inventories that they were concerned about my leadership with um, interacting with soldiers and if I know how to mentor and stuff like that. But they gave me a go and my heart was beaten by the second because I'm like, y'all yeah, really gonna focus on change command inventory, like really? For real, is that serious? But the sergeant major had basically broke down like, hey, I understand you're looking out for commanders, blah, 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 at the end of the day, CSCP, boop, boop, boop. But you need to make sure that you're committing time over here to your soldiers, which I felt like I was on anyway. And they didn't know that. They didn't know what else I was doing. I mean, and no one is going to insert in your NCOER like, oh, you know, I made sure I spent time with my soldier. I made sure I showed my soldier how to go to the edge. And I'm like, who's going to put that in NCOER? But yeah, at the end of the day, selection is not easy, you guys. And some of the incentives of joining SVAP is you get a $5,000 bonus just for joining. So it's a volunteer thing. Don't worry about HRC selecting you. Don't worry about one day opening up your um, AKO and seeing that you're on assignment to SVAP because it's strictly volunteer. Do you hear me? You volunteer. Y'all know what I said? Oh, did y'all not hear what I said? Huh? So when you join SFAB, it is strictly volunteer. You only have to volunteer, you guys. HRC will not select down like they do with recruiting and drill sergeant schools. So don't worry about that, you guys. It's only volunteer. Um, and then the $5,000 incentive, and then you get a special skill identifier that gets added to your SRB. So it remains on your SRB the whole time you're in SFAB. You get $75 extra every month. It's kind of like with airborne school. I know $75 ain't that much, but if you're not airborne and you're not in SFAB, what extra pay would you be getting? Okay, exactly. I thought so. I, all I heard was crickets. It was real quiet. And then um, what else? Oh, you guys. SFAB offers so much money when it comes to bonuses. I did a reenlistment while I was in SFAB and I got 33,000. My homegirl got 50, another one of my homegirls got 55. 55,000, yes, 55,000 dollars. Like, are you serious? I am as serious as all seriousness. My homeboy, he reenlisted downrange, which means if you downrange and you deploy, it's tax-free. He got all, all the drip drop money. All the drip drop money. And my stupid behind over here looking like, dang, I should have re-enlisted when I was downrange. I was just so eager. But the reason why I went ahead and re-enlisted before I went downrange is because I was getting ready to get promoted to sign first class. And as a sign first class, uh, SFAB wasn't allowing sign first classes to um, get re-enlistment bonuses. So I jumped on that bonus while I was a staff sergeant. And I already knew I was gonna stay in the army and make a career. So I basically went in there and that was my last re-enlistment. Um, and I got a bonus for it, 33,000. So regardless if I was, uh, ESIS or deployed or not, I still got free money. So, um, the SFAP locations are Fort Bennett, Fort Brad, Fort Carson, Fort Hood, JBLM, and then they're doing a six um, SFAP. But for the most part, you guys, that is what selection is. That is what some selection and assessment is. Again, the turnaround time frame. Oh, you guys, guess what? After I did my boy in seven and went to selection in June and got us uh, accepted, um, after I went through assessment, I PCS in August. Yeah, June, July, August. That's how quick SFAB was for me and the turnaround time frame for me. So um, if you guys are in Korea, if you guys are deployed, you can go ahead and submit a 4187. They will pull you from your deployment. They will pull you from Korea, Germany, Hawaii, wherever you're located. Because at the end of the day, SFAB is that unit that the army needs right now. We're basically advising. So you know how like when you deploy and you go um, assist or help other units or foreign nationals or whoever um with stuff you won't really be doing that no more you'll basically be helping them and showing them like hey i'm advising you on instead of doing your supply request like this i advise you to do your supply request like that so the SVAB and what we kind of do is not that hard it's just like the physical part because for one we do pt like ain't nobody did pt in their life like basic training style like rank style like secret forces not secret sources, special force style PT. That's the number one thing SFAB loves to do. They love to do PT. 
when I wake up in the mornings, I be like, oh, why did I join SFAB? I'm like, this shit is so hard. I cannot, my body is just, I'm too old. Y'all, I am 32 years old. Y'all think I still wanna be out here climbing ropes? No, I do not. Y'all think I wanna go out here and be doing six mile ropes? No, I do not. Come to SFAB. That's what you're gonna be doing. You're gonna be climbing ropes. You're gonna be doing rope marches. Of course, you're gonna run. I mean, we run consistently every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday. We have not skipped the run day. Do you hear me? Do you hear me? We have not skipped the run day. Can I, do I need to say it again? We have not skipped a run day, okay? So granted, you know, SFAB might not seem that hard. And like I said, you guys, I'ma just be real, I'ma just be honest. SFAB is no joke. And the reason why I went and joined SFAB is because I wanted to get promoted to Sign First Class. So when I submitted my 4187 and went to selection, the list for Sign First Class came out as soon as I came back. And guess what? Your girl got selected for Sign First Class. And so in my head, I'm looking like, oh my God, what the did I just do? Did I just join SFAB? <sighs> I joined SFAB because I wanna make Sign First Class and guess what? I made Sign First Class without SFAB. But I'm telling y'all, I feel like being an SFAB will most definitely help me make Master Sign. So if you guys are hesitant, if you guys feel like, okay, she is, I'm just keeping it real, you guys. I'm just being honest. Like I said, I was gonna start being honest. SFAB is no joke. Being an SFAB is all seriousness. It's not like the conventional army where you just wake up every day and you go do, you know, go do SSA runs. It's not like you just go and put, you know, um, certificates like you a 42 alpha. You just sit at the computer all day. In SFAB, you're going to the field, you're doing GRTC, you're doing live fire, um, you're doing training, you're going to all these schools. That's another benefit though. Like schools that you weren't able to go to in a conventional army, SFAB will send you to those schools. I'm telling you. So SFAB might seem like cruel, but it has a lot of benefits. And I feel like I have benefited from SFAB so much, even like with based off the pay. My only thing that I don't like about SFAB is that we have to be so who who for PT. And I feel like there's a reason behind being who who because when you're deployed and you're in a deployed environment, you just never know what might pop off. You need to make sure you're able to carry somebody. You might you um, need to make sure you're able to drag somebody. You need to make sure that you're able to be physically fit because you just never know what situation you might be in. Like SFAB, we deploy rapidly. So we just um, came back and I know we're on the break deployed again so um all the different SFABs are like on a rotational deployment but I don't know now based off everything that's going on with the coronavirus like they haven't really said anything about it I do know we're teleworking and again don't take my video based off my experience and be like nah I'm not doing that at the end of the day it helped me and it can help you too you just have to get your mind right you have to get that mind right. Like, don't let nobody discourage you. Don't let nobody tell you that you can't do it. Don't tell yourself. Don't doubt yourself. That's the number one person that's gonna be holding you back from doing something like this is yourself. Like, do what you need to do to progress. Like, a lot of things are changing in the Army. The promotion system is changing. And you might not be able to make time first class. A lot of people are scared to deploy. A lot of people don't want to deploy. You're going to deploy in SFAB. Um, I don't even understand how people get away with retiring as a sergeant major and only being deployed once. I done deployed three times. So at the end of the day, I have kids. I love my children, but I have to deploy. So don't be stuck in this little bubble of, okay, all I wanna do is go do my supply runs, um, do my lateral transfers, my turn-ins, go to the SSA pickup and come back home and that be it for the day. Because guess what? You're not you're not competing or being competitive with those other 92 Yankees that's out there doing the same thing. And I ended up getting promoted to sign first class without completing SLC. That's another benefit. If you um, go to MATA, which is a whole different video, which I can explain on that video. If you go to MATA as a specialist promotable, when you graduate MATA and you um, give your certificates to S1, you're gonna be maxed out at 799 points. 799 points, which means the very next month, you're gonna make E5. And it's a benefit for E6, it's a benefit for E6, E7, like it's a lot of benefits in S5. So don't let me come on here and scare you guys. Do it, do it. If you have any questions, ask me. I will be honest. Again, I'm trying to be honest as possible. In the last video I did on S5, I felt like I was being like mushy. Um, I wasn't telling you guys the truth. And I basically came on here and told the truth in regards to my situation about S5. So, um, it's not just a regular conventional army, but in some ways we have 
conventional stuff. It's just like a whole different standard. Again, if you're in the conventional army, you have to get a 180 on your APFT. And SAT is a 240, which is still not hard because you have people in conventional units that get like 260, 270, 280 from matching all their push-ups, matching all their sit-ups. So if you can do it, then you can come to SAT and do it. Like, oh, that's all I gotta do. Run two miles in 18, 19 minutes and get a 240. Okay, but yeah, you guys, if y'all have any questions, just make sure y'all leave them in the comment section below. If you have questions that you don't want to ask on here, just make sure you shoot me an email at AmeliaG5587. Make sure you guys subscribe. Please subscribe to my channel. Make sure you guys give me a like and leave a comment. And if you guys have not seen my last video based off my Amelia Talks t-shirt, let's talk about it. Make sure you watch that video. Y'all see that little note card right there? Make sure you click on it so you can go watch that video as well. But at the end of the day, SFAB is not for everybody. SFAB was for me. So um, pray about it. Get some advice, get some input, and you guys will be good. So until next time, you guys, peace.